you are what you eat. This phrase is frequently used in American culture to encourage young children to eat nutritious food, and yes, it is often meant with exasperated size on the part of such children. Despite the phrase having become cliché, a surprising amount of scientific truth accompanies it. When we consume food, it travels through the esophagus and into the stomach and small intestine, where it combines with fluids and breaks down into nutrients. These usable nutrients pass into our bloodstream and to the rest of our body. Thus, the process of eating and drinking literally turns your food into part of your body. So truly, you are what you eat. This week's gospel continues Jesus' long teaching that he is the true bread from heaven. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We heard last week. Today, he gets more graphic. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. No wonder those gathered around him get upset. The Gospel of John doesn't include the institution of the Lord's Supper. Indeed, in John, Jesus himself is the Passover lamb, slain at the cross. But here, 13 chapters earlier, Jesus declares that accepting the invitation to come and believe in him, to eat his flesh and drink his blood, means life. When we take into ourselves Jesus' words, his healing touch, the power of his love, they become part of us. They nourish our spirits so we can live in wholeness, health, and salvation. Words that are all connected in the ancient languages of Scripture. It is not surprising, then, that Holy Communion, the sharing of literal food and drink, became a profound means by which the Church receives and becomes the body of Christ, in a mysterious way we can't fully understand, we truly are what we eat, and no other meal is more life-giving.
Good morning. Welcome to Bethany on this rainy day. And I want to give you all a bunch of credit because you got out of a warm, cozy bed on a rainy day and came to church. Good for you. My name is Deacon Jen Elsenbrook. This is my husband, Jason, right here in the front. Um, we are happy to be here on this morning where we get to celebrate a baptism and be together and look at a part of God's word that was pretty difficult to put a sermon together on. So um, please join us for fellowship after the service. I saw uh, a cake back there, so feel free to join us then. We will begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeing God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We join together in our opening hymn. Number 542.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. 
The first reading this morning is from Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn the seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She will mix her wine, and she also has set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here's the psalm refrain for August 18. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Let's sing that together. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord. For those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Second reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 5. Be careful then how you live not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand that they will be, that the will of the, of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God, the Father, at all times, and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. According to John in the sixth chapter. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, 
Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I am the chaplain at Great Lakes Recovery Centers. I work with many different people at Great Lakes. I see, see and hear it all from both staff and clients. As I was preparing this message, I met a new client. This client had suffered unimaginable pain. He and his three siblings were taken away from his birth parents when they were young due to CPS finding drugs and alcohol in the home. To add to the pain, he and his sister went to one foster home while his two brothers went to another. The foster family that had he and his sister adopted them. It turns out this foster family adopted them for free labor on the farm. Additionally, if the labor wasn't done correctly, this foster family believed in corporal punishment. This client has felt alone his entire life. Unsurprisingly, he is skeptical about believing in God, and especially believing in a loving God. When he asked to speak to me, about his spirituality, he told me that he was struggling to believe in God because he couldn't see God. He needed the physical representation. Many of my clients, and I'm guessing many of us at times, might see God as a father or mother figure, but that's not something this client could hear. He had been to church during his adult life, and he was actually baptized as an adult. When I initially asked him if he had been baptized, he talked to me about feeling the presence of God. His eyes lit up at the moment, but the pain he experiences daily has dulled his ability to feel the presence of God consistently. God, in God's mercy, comes to us through the sacraments. A sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. As Lutherans, we define sacrament as an act that is commanded by Christ, uses a material element, and is a bearer of God's promise through connection with the word, means of grace. Means of grace. The way that grace comes to us, the way that we can see grace. I am the daughter of a United Methodist pastor. Growing up, 
in the United Methodist Church was not much different, I guess, I'm guessing, than growing up in the ELCA, except the Lutheran Church places more emphasis on grace. Thanks be to God. The United Methodist Church also has two sacraments, baptism and communion. I grew up never questioning sacraments. I never gave a second thought about communion. And if I'm being honest, I just went through the motions. I started joyfully learning about other churches and the way they did things. Learning about the practices of many other denominations led me to ask, what are we doing? And why are we doing this? So what are we doing? Can you imagine if you were following Jesus, listening to every word he said, and all of a sudden Jesus says, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Wait, what? Can you imagine what was running through the disciples' minds? The mystery in the Lord's Supper is just as present today as it was then, right? When Jesus speaks, we can trust what he is saying, though. This chapter, John 6, has always been pivotal to me and my faith. Luther tells us that John's gospel is far to be preferred over the other, other three because it will show you Christ and teach you everything you need to know. I agree with that. When Moses had the guts to ask God what God's name was, do you remember what God said? God said, I am who I am. John's gospel is telling us who God is through Jesus. Did you hear the echo of I am in the gospel reading? Jesus tells us, I am the living bread who came down from heaven. Do you believe it? The mystery of what happens in Eucharist is beautiful. Now, Let's think about why we are doing this. During the Last Supper, Jesus broke bread telling his disciples, this is my body broken for you. When he poured the wine, Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. This is not an easy thing to understand. But we, as followers of Jesus, can trust him at his word. Henry Nouwen was a Dutch Catholic priest, and he is a profound spiritual writer for all of us. Behind his clear words, which are sometimes presented simplistically, there is a real depth. In his book, Out of the Solitude, which I happened to be reading while I was writing this, he concludes, this is what we express when we take bread and wine in Thanksgiving. We do not eat bread to still our hunger or drink wine to quench our thirst. We eat just a little bread and drink just a little bit of wine in the realization that God's presence is the presence of the one who came, but is still to come, who touched our hearts, but has not yet taken all our sadness away. And so, when we share some bread and some wine together, we do this not as people who have arrived, but as women and men, who can support each other in patient expectation until we see him again, and then our hearts will be full of joy, a joy 
that no one can take away. Our beloved Bishop Catherine described the Lord's Supper in this way. The presence of Christ is in, with, and under the bread and wine. I invite you to think about that for a second. Jesus is in us. Jesus is with us. And Jesus is under the bread and wine as he holds us in community when we approach the table. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. I'm going to say something that you're going to hear again in just a little while. We are buried with Christ in the waters of baptism and raised to a new birth into a living hope through baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus. We remind ourselves at the communion table as we eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus so that we may live in him and he in us. Maybe that's not something my client could see, but he could feel it. Thanks be to God. Amen. As, as we're ready for the prayers of intercession, um, I would like to tell you um, that I'm going to ask you all to pray for Gretchen. She is a Lutheran pastor that I went to seminary with at Wartburg, and she lost her husband to a cardiac event very recently, and it was, it was really hard, um, as it would be for anybody calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has mixed her wine. May the harvest of seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards, vineyards, farms, and all of creation. Protect and conserve the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has invited her guests. Make your presence known to all who feel lost, abandoned, or, hurting, who are, or who are hurting at this time. Direct your spirit of care to all who seek healing and comfort. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek the refuge of God, Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at the table to anyone who comes. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Wisdom has shown her path of insight. May we journey on her paths, looking toward a bright future while remembering from where we have come. We give our thanks for those who have gone before us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. 
Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a peace, a sign of peace with one another. set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen.
us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being for your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you, for your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us all and call us, to witness, call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love, for your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. We join together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So everybody, on uh, page 227 in the front part of the hymnal, the red hymnal, please follow along, and wherever there is dark print, please read those responses with all of us. God, who is rich and mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to a new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Leo baptized into Brady and Kelsey, as you bring Leo to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring Leo to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, placing in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God Proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God has made, and work for justice and peace. Kelsey and Brady, do you promise to help Leo grow in the Christian faith and life? Amber, do you promise to nurture Leo in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit? and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion of the church. And people of God, do you promise to support Leo and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We do. 
I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe? Everyone, please join now in the confession of faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father of our mind, the creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. As a river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit now, the power of your living word, O God, that he who was washed in the waters of baptism here may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, for the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Dr. Peterson, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. And let us welcome the newly baptized with the words there in the book. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission that we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word through all the world. So these guys have been really, really patient. Um, yeah, you can go pull that <laughs> And then you can have this uh, handle and, and also this shell over the and the napkin and the certificates and a quilt, which you may have The quilt. Exactly. Well, I didn't know that. Did somebody present that? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, Son of the Father from eternity, and true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has saved me, a lost and condemned person. He has freed me from sin, death, and the power of the devil, not with silver or gold, but with his holy and precious blood, and through his innocent suffering and death. All this he has done. So that I may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead and lives and rules eternally. So Leo Patrick and Kelsey, Amber, and Grace, and Axel, and family, this is most certainly true. You can go back to her. <laughs> Please join me in the closing prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the heritage you have given us as a community of faith. Be with us in this uncertain time of the church. Send us a pastoral leader who will love you and equip us for mission in the world. Move our hearts to a place of change. Open our hearts to hear and see your word in everything we do, every day and every moment of our lives. Move us to be the church you call us to be in this time and place. Yes. this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sorry. I always say time and space. So I gotta... <laughs> and we can join together and enjoy cake after the service. Let's join together in our sending song, number 455 in our red hymnals.
are the body of Christ.